In this math lesson, we are going to learn about annuities. Annuities. Now, annuities is probably the biggest market in investments because everyone invests um, in general using annuities. No one has a million rand just to invest. Okay, where did that million rand come from? Well, most people invest with smaller amounts every month or on a term basis, and that's called annuities. So annuity is when I invest um, the same amount, it doesn't have to be the same amount, but, but for uh, simplicity's sake, we're going to stick to um, a constant value that is invested every month or every year, or every two months, or every six months, something like that. So, um, what, how will we be able to calculate how much such an annuity will be worth after a certain time? And let's just go and represent it on a timeline. I think a timeline is going to, to help us to do this most effectively. So let's say I am investing 100 rand every month starting starting in, um, in one month's time I'm going to start investing 100 rand so in one month's time I invest 100 rand in another month's time I'm going to invest another 100 rand and this continues let's say for about two years so this is the first month, the second month, the third month, and I go up for 24 months. I am going to invest 100 rand every month. And let's say I get 12% per annum compounded monthly. So my interest rate is a compound interest that is compounded over the same, same period that I make my investment. How much will this investment be worth after 24 months? How much will I have in my bank account after 24 months? Well, let's move it from the back. Okay, let's go from the back. Looking at, at it from the back, I see my latest investment, my very last investment, wouldn't have earned any interest. So that 100 Rand would still just be 100 Rand. But just one month before it, I had 100 Rand invested that has only been lying there for 100, no, 100 months, for one month. In other words, the 100 Rand before it gets added also, of course, because it's the same bank account, and it was there for one month. So I added interest, uh, how much interest? Well, 1% because it's compounded monthly, so I divide the 12% by 12, okay, but it added, it gained interest for one month. But two months before that, however, I was doing my regular um, investment. So I had another 100 grand that was invested there for two months. So it earned interest for two months. And this goes on all the way back for how many, for how many months? Well, what would be my, my very oldest investment. My oldest investment here would be the investment I made one month after uh, after I, s I decided to make an investment. And that means that 100 Rand would have been invested or earned interest for 23 months. Why 23 months? Why not 24 months? Well, remember, if I count backwards all the way, I'm not going all the way back to zero. I'm only going back to one. So this one would have earned interest for one month, then it would be at two. For two months, then it would be at three. So eventually when it's at 24, it would have earned interest for 23 months. The first month was not counted. Okay. Now this is where uh, you should bells should be going off because this looks very much like a pattern, doesn't it? Let's see. It's definitely not arithmetic. 
It is for sure geometry. Why? Because every time I'm multiplying with the same bracket. I'm multiplying with 1, 0, 1. In other words, the bracket 1 plus 0, 1. Every time, here I've multiplied with it once, here I've multiplied with it twice, there I've multiplied with it 23 times. So I notice that my general term, Tn, in this series, because I'm adding up the terms, is a r n minus 1, isn't it? That's geometric. Geometric. So that I see this is indeed my 24th term. Where A is my first term, or in this case, my monthly deposit. R is my interest rate added, or my monthly interest rate added with 1. Uh, and N represents the number of investments I make. Which leaves me with the very simple conclusion that to add up this thing, all I need to do is use my geometric sum formula. There we go. Let's see. What is this geometric sum formula? Well, A is my first term. You see that is 100. 1 minus R is my constant ratio, which is 1, 0, 1 in this case, that bracket, to the power of n. n in this case is the number of terms, but just to keep in line with the story I was telling, is that that's the number of investments I made. I made 24 investments, divided by 1 minus 1, 0, 1. Well, again, we just want to get rid of dividing with a negative number, so let's just um, multiply with a negative in the numerator and in the denominator. And that just gives us 100. Inside the bracket, I get, uh, the terms can swap around because I'm multiplying the negative inside there, so I get negative 1 and positive 1, 0, 1 to the power of 24 minus 1 divided by, and in the denominator we get 1 minus 1, 0, 1 is negative 0, 0, 1, which is multiplied with a negative, so 0, 1. That just looks neater. Looks like I can do that one better on my calculator in the negative state. So let's use our calculator to calculate that. I'm going to type it in exactly as it appears. So I've got 100. It is multiplied inside a bracket 1.01 with an exponent of 24 minus 1. Close the bracket divided by 0.01. And we get that this investment will be worth 2,697.35 cents. Uh, that is how much this investment will be worth. 